YouTube all it going the goat owls is back today we're talking about some sleepers here we're just about 24 hours away from day one of the NFL draft wanted to get the chance to talk about some of the sleeper guys but some of the guys that can go earlier than you think and then we have some the deeper sleepers as well to talk about too uh, so excited about this one to break down these prospects we have a bunch of recent videos covering the draft up on the channel and a few more to come, including our final mock draft. We'll be live during day one of the NFL draft right here, so make sure you like, subscribe to notifications on, and then follow us on Twitter. That's very important. Live analysis day two and three and a lot going on there. Final predictions, like very last second thoughts predictions on there. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. Uh, our sponsors, GLD Shop, Liquid IV, have the Cowboys chain on from the GLD Shop. They have more NFL teams. Uh, talk about a guy we've been talking about a little bit, Marte Mapu from Sacramento State. You know, smaller school type player. So thought he uh, fell in the category of sleepers, of a sleeper. But um, And he's been getting some buzz lately, but I do think he has a shot to go earlier than people think. And I do think he's in this kind of switch positions a little bit, play more of a linebacker. But uh, yeah, he could he possibly sneak in? It's a little bold, but maybe he could possibly sneak in at the end of the second round. I'm not counting on it, but it's possible. I definitely expect him to go early round three, which during most of this process was kind of unheard of. So kind of a sleeper guy because of the, you know, maybe not a huge sleeper name anymore, but because of a smaller school switching positions, going to go earlier than you think. Uh, watch out for Marte Mapu. Uh, next, uh, Tyon Evans from Louisville who could be a later day three sleeper running back. Uh, I like his running style. You know, he's physical but athletic at the same time. I'm surprised he's not getting, an, uh, you know, more talk because of that. Uh, you know, so, you know, the combination of the physicality and athleticism is, you know, there's a lot of good running backs in this class, but some, you know, there's a lot of them that either have one or the other. You know, maybe they're 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 super athletic, but, you know, they're a little on the smaller side, you know, and uh, or the opposite. So I like that Evans is, you know, he's not super flashy, but he's kind of the complete package here. So somebody can get uh, a sleeper running back, uh, you know, later in day three. And I do have one more running back for you, and that's Lou Nichols from Central Michigan. And same thing, he's got like your ideal build, like big, big you know, but every down running back was he weighed about 220 pounds. Uh, and in two years ago, he was an absolute monster for Central Michigan. Didn't see as much of him this year, but... Um, you know, he can run and he's like, uh, you know, kind of, kind of like Evans, we talked about kind of like a total package type running back. So, uh, could be a sneaky guy in day three that somebody gets. We always hear about these running backs, you know, day three that you think they're going to be depth guys. They end up getting something like a decent role or better in the NFL right away. Could, could it be guys like, like Nichols or Evans? Definitely a possibility. Uh, then some receivers I want to talk. I love me some Jalen or Moreno Cropper from Fresno state. He's a little undersized. Maybe more than a little, and that's well for a receiver. I guess is a little, uh, and that's probably why he's not talked about more. The Fresno State receiver, he's you know was he about 170 pounds, so he is thin, but man, he was super produ productive for the Bulldogs. He got open, and he was great after the catch. You know, for like a thin, you know, smaller guy, you think he wouldn't be that strong after the catch, but well, first, you know, he just make people miss. He had really good field vision after the catch, uh, and he would outrun people as well. But he was tough too. He was tough to bring down for for a, a lighter guy. Obviously, um, you know, I, you know, if you, we're talking about Nathaniel Dell, pretty high, and by high I mean, you know, maybe later on day day two. Why why aren't we talking about Cropper? You know, up there. I think he because they're they're both extremely thin. That's their negatives. Uh, I think they're both you know very good at getting open, but both very twitchy and big big playability guys. So, um, you know. I'm not really counting him to sneak in late day three, but you know, I mean, day round four honestly might sound early based on what we've heard, but I think he's talented enough to maybe sneak into round four, possibly be a round five guy. I think that'd be a pretty good pick there. Is really really his only flaw is he, he's a, he's a little light. He's a little light right now. Uh, another one, Michael Tinsley from Penn State, who two seasons ago was extremely productive. He was with Western Kentucky. Uh, Bailey Zappi, you know, that offense there, that, that was a very high power. He went to Penn State this year, and he was solid for them. A lot of times when Clifford didn't really know what to do, that actually seemed to be more of his guy, like Parker Washington, more of the bigger name, uh, you know, because he has kind of a freaky ability after the catch, you know, but sometimes he disappeared. Tinsley was kind of their go-to guy, it felt like, when they needed somebody or if there was like a one, um, you know, a play that was, you know, one read play. Well, minus like the screen passes to Parker Washington, but a one read play like downfield, it seemed to be Tinsley. So he seemed to be the go-to guy. Uh, and that was his only year at Penn State. So pretty impressive 
heard his name a little bit, you know, before he was kind of like a round seven guy, but I definitely think he's going to go earlier than that. Could he be a guy that sneaks into round five or maybe, maybe even round four? Uh, you know, just believe in, you know, because he's, he's been pretty productive. So just believe in him, in him in the next level here. A couple more receivers that I like. Uh, Grant DeBose from Charlotte. He's fun to watch. He's, he's got some contested catches, some really good contested catches and uh, catches in traffic, you know, in the red zone as well. Some good hands. You see him go across the middle of the field. He's pretty tough after the catch as well. So kind of a do-it-all guy, uh, you know, really good hands, you know, especially at the contested catch point. Uh, just played for Charlotte, you know, so maybe that's why people are sleeping on him a little bit uh, because, you know, it's, it's you know, uh, obviously it's Division One, but it's not the biggest school in the world. So another receiver that could he go in round five? I think we have a pretty good pick down there, not getting enough talk around that range or could even sneak into round four like a lot of these receivers that we're talking about. And then one more receiver, Dontavian Wicks, maybe a little bit more of a well-known name compared to the last few guys. Uh, you know, and a little bit like DeBose, you know, pretty good, at, you know, attacking the ball at its high point. Pretty damn good after the catch as well. Get some separation. Uh, you know, this is a guy that, you know, we talk about with some of his other receivers. Do they sneak in around four or five? Talk about Wicks, you know, could he, could he? I don't think he goes round three, but could he sneak in at the end of round three? More likely a round four guy. Maybe people have been sleeping on him in that category as well. Maybe been talked about as like a five or six guy here, but Wicks, was uh, very solid for Virginia the last last few years. Uh, next, we got Will Mallory, who's been getting some buzz lately. So it's the guy that's going to end up maybe going earlier than where he's been talked about throughout the entire pre-draft process. Uh, you know, very you know sneaky, athletic tight end. You know, definitely a weapon in the passing game. Uh, you know, a guy a, a guy that you know what's the ceiling? You know, could he go late three? I think it's a possibility. I don't think he gets out of the fourth round. So. And there was like a list of other tight ends, maybe like 10 or so. Talked about more than him, maybe up until the last couple weeks. So he's a guy uh, getting some steam, picking up some steam here, heading into the NFL draft. Uh, next, you know, you know, much smaller school. You know, looks like he's wearing North Dakota State uh, gear there, but he's actually a Northern Michigan tackle, Jake Witt, uh, who is... It sounds like will be drafted. You know, he's probably going to be around six at the earliest, but could be around seven. But from what it sounds like, he will get drafted. I actually know somebody that plays on the offensive line at Northern Michigan too. So it sounds like this guy's the real deal. Sounds like teams like him and his upside. They put a little more size on him. Um, you know, he like like the athleticism and the length. Uh, but it sounds, you know, that's that's what the the later rounds are for. You know, guys that you take a shot on here in the seventh round and guy that has upside and. You know, smaller school guy, you know, a guy that you just have to have, you know, because if he goes undrafted, you know, does he end up with the Lions, you know, some, you know, from maybe, maybe not, but coming from Northern Michigan. Um, but, you know, so does somebody draft him so they get him and they get the chance to see what he's about and work with them uh, because, you know, teams have a little bit more on, uh, you know, the bigger school guys. So that is a smaller school, deeper day three guy to look out for. And then potentially another one here from a, you know, a Shepard offensive lineman. We had a quarterback from Shepard in the draft too, but Joey Fisher, uh, who I think could go earlier than Witt. I think, you, could, you know, this guy should get drafted as well. Could he go all the way up into round five possibly, you know, a little more physical than Witt perhaps. So uh, could this guy move to guard? I think he's good enough at tackle, but there's a possibility he could move to guard. But yeah, some of these small school offensive linemen, a little intriguing. I expect both these guys to actually get drafted, even though, you know, they're not big names or big schools at all here. Uh, next, we got uh, City Sal from Eastern Michigan, uh, who's a little bit more well-known compared to the other guys. But, yeah, he keeps moving up boards. Could be a guy that's going earlier than you ex you're expecting. I actually could see him in round three. I could see him on day two. Um, you know, so Eastern Michigan, somewhat of a smaller school, obviously. He probably started off in the round five, six range in the beginning of this entire process, but continues to move up. So a guy that... Uh, Maybe surprisingly, some people could go round three. I don't think he gets out of round four, uh, and then maybe could start very early on in his career. He's, uh, you know, for his size and physicality, he's pretty quick as well. So you do you do like that. Speaking of Eastern Michigan, Jose Ramirez is a pretty impressive pass rusher. Um, he's got really good get off. He, he's very productive getting after the quarterback. Closing speed on the quarterback's impressive. You know, I, I like I like uh, the pass rush moves on the outside as well. But again, I like the explosiveness off the ball. Very productive. Based on his pass rush skills, he another one that almost feels like, you know, early four. Could he sneak into round three? Um, but he could be better 
uh, against the run. Sometimes ends up on the ground a little too much. So that maybe makes him a little bit of reach that high. But he's so impressive getting after the quarterback. And you think, you know, he's not Max Crosby. He's not going to be Max Crosby. You think Eastern Michigan and guys that, you know, got the job done. They were very productive at Eastern Michigan. It was just smaller school guy that was really the only thing for the most part, you know. So it makes teams wonder, you know, do we take a shot at this guy because of his pass rushing skills. Another smaller school pass rush pass rusher here from Appalachian State, uh, Nick Hampton, who, uh, yeah, definitely a guy that has a shot at round three. Another one that has a shot at round three could go round four. Like the length, uh, you know, like, like uh, you know, like uh, the pass rush was on the outside. The bend is very impressive, uh, and he drops in coverage a bit. He's pretty decent at it. The way in his back pedal, pretty smooth actually. So it's a lengthy edge rusher that's really good on the outside move that can drop in coverage. So. Yeah, just like Ramirez, could, I think Hampton would be a little more likely to go earlier than Ramirez, more, more more likely to go even earlier than expected, which would be like later round three. So another somewhat smaller school guy to watch out for. Not so much of a small school. DJ Johnson, the edge rusher from Oregon here, you know, so obviously a big school. But um, yeah, I've heard, um, you know, some people talk about him being a sleeper. I've heard, you know, former former GM Rick Spielman say it, and, uh, you know, that kind of caught my eye. Uh, you know, watching a little bit more of him. And he wasn't super productive at Oregon, but when you watch him, uh, he actually dropped in coverage quite a bit, and they had him sitting and reading the run quite a bit. Uh, and that, you know, did, Oregon got Dan Lanning over there from Georgia. He was Georgia's defense coordinator. And that's what he did a, you know, a lot of what Trayvon Walker and even Nolan Smith. Now, DJ Johnson is nowhere near those guys. Nowhere near those guys, but you see, you know, if you let him rush the passer a little bit more, maybe they'd be a little bit more productive. And I think he had seven or so sacks anyways, but, uh, and then he ran in the four fours as well. And in terms of his 40, um, you know, so he's got that speed, you know, he can stop the run. He's physical stopping the run. He can drop in coverage. Uh, it's just a matter of having him rush a little bit more, but working on adding some moves to his, to his game as well, because he kind of just bull rushes, try to use uh or just straight straight line speed, you know, tries to use that. So he definitely can use some more moves. I think NFL teams, uh, you know, NFL, like the, the coaching staffs could, could coach that up. So this could be a sneaky guy as well, possibly in the ra- anywhere in the range of four through six, I'd say uh, probably the early five range for him. But, yeah, because he's so speedy and athletic, you know, teams like the upside there. And then coming from a Dan Landing defense, pretty impressive. Uh, next, Isaiah Moore, I like his, you know, just straight up an inside linebacker. I mean, he could play 4-3 inside, of course, but I would imagine he goes and plays a 3-4 inside linebacker role. Now, you look at the linebacker class, is there a ton of those guys? Like the inside linebackers, like the physical inside guys that are really good at plugging gaps and stopping a run. There's not too many of them. There are not too many of them at all. And here you got a day three guy that's really not getting any buzz that I think does a pretty good job at that. He's not super flashy. Like, is he going to make plays and coverage? Is he the fastest guy in the world? No, not really. But he can play your inside linebacker. He can fill gaps. He can make that big hit. He can stop the run. He's going to do his job there. So I liked his tape. Really no buzz on him. Um, you know, people probably talk about him as a round seven guy, maybe round six, a team that's really looking for an inside linebacker and they don't have one by, uh, you know, early round five. I think it's a possibility. I think it's a possibility there. So, um, I think it's kind of a safe pick around that range. So Isaiah Moore from NC state is one that I liked. I liked his tape. Uh, then Jalen Graham, he actually first caught my eye a couple years ago playing Notre Dame, kind of all over, all over the field in a good way. Uh, flashy, kind of a freaky guy, um, so that's when he first caught my eye. Uh, and he's got a pretty good tape, too. I mean, they have him dropping coverage quite a bit, almost lining up on the slot sometimes. Uh, you know, actually almost lining him up at the edge sometimes and let him rush. You know, it'd be a blitz, you know, a solid blitzer at the next level as well. Um, you know, could he, you know, be a little more physical inside the tackles, you know, stopping the run, sure. But he's a flashy guy. He's everywhere and he can cover. Um, he almost gives you safety vibes at, at, at times. But, you know, he is, he is going to be, um, you know, he is going to be a linebacker. But, yeah, another guy to keep an eye out for there, the Purdue linebacker. Uh, next, uh, Daryl Luter from South Alabama. I, I, I like Luter a lot. Uh, I mean, he's a, he's. I mean, you can see him in the picture too. He's on the thin side for sure, but he sure doesn't play like it. He don't play like it because he's physical. I mean, he is a press man corner. He'll jam you very well at the line, and he's not afraid to come up and hit. Uh, he's not afraid to get his hands in there to get, get to rip a ball out. I was impressed with his tape. Um, you know, this is here's another guy. 
that, I mean, some of the guys we talked on this list, you know, could go in the yeah, anywhere. We talked about from round three to anywhere. I think this is another one of those guys that could surprisingly sneak in the end of three. Again, not counting on it. I'd actually say he's a fourth round pick, and it's a guy that you haven't really heard his name much at all. So maybe a lot of people are expecting like five, six, seven. Uh, but I don't think he'll get out of the fourth round. I think I think a man coverage team will want to get it, their hands on him. So I was impressed by his tape. Cornerback class is so good. Rajon Wright, another one, Oregon State's corner. His brother, Nashon Wright, is uh, was at Oregon State, but he's with the Cowboys now. And the Cowboys took him a little earlier than I thought. And he's gotten some playing time for him, for, for them. Uh, and the brother, the younger brother, Rajon, I actually think is I, I definitely think he's better. I mean, not a whole lot better, but I definitely think he's better. I don't hesitate to say that. Uh, you know, so he could another just just like uh, Luter there we just talked about could 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 he possibly go? I'd say you know early four is a possibility. Uh, but you love the length, you love the physicality, you love the ball skills. You know, he's more of an off. I mean, he could press. You want him to press because because of his length, but he's more of an off coverage guy, perhaps. But um, yeah, you like the ball skills there and the length, you know, and his brother's in the league and he's been pretty decent. So, uh, that helps as well. Uh, and they both came from, you know, Laney college. If you watch uh last chance, you there, the, um, Rajon was actually on the show when they did that. So that was pretty cool as well. Um, so the Oregon state corner one to watch out for, didn't really get to see him work out much in the pre-draft process though. So that's a tough part. You know, if he did that and did pretty well, I mean, we would be talking about round three, I think. So uh, that, that maybe that's the tough part there. Uh, but I, I do like him as an early day three corner that could possibly get some early playing time. Uh, and then Shamari Connor, I like it as as like your big nickel. You, you, you know, today today's game, you know, you know, slot guys being used a whole lot more. But some team, more and more teams are trying to find these big guys to put the. I mean, not huge, but bigger physical guys to put there. Uh, you know, to, in case they got a man up on a tight end, I think Connor could be that guy. He's got experience at safety and corner, but I like him in the slot. I, I like him specifically for, you know, manning up on tight ends, but you also can move him around a bit. He'll fly around the field too, and he'll hit you. He'll, he'll hit somebody pretty good. So I like him. I kind of grouped him with the slot guys. Uh, and, and that's a guy that can go in the round three through five range, you know, anywhere for, you know, late three to early five range as well. Uh, more most likely around four guy I'd say you just don't hear his name pop up enough and then one more it's a safety we actually talked about him in my top 10 safeties video Quindell Johnson which I like his tape it's very flashy of course he's a little inconsistent he's a little stiff you know when he has to open up and turn uh, that's really not where he's you know strong at maybe that's why people are sleeping on him a little bit but uh, I, I like he's another guy that you like the upside possibly manning up on tight ends or, or guys in the slot you know, probably the, yeah, the bigger guys like tight, tight, like tight ends, um, you know, but he also can play free safety. He showed some playmaking ability and some range at the free safety position. So I do like that as well. And he'll miss tackles, but he'll come up and hit you pretty good as well. So there's a safety uh, to watch out for. So some sleepers that, and there's a long list of sleepers and deeper sleepers, small school guys, but these are the guys that really kind of something about their tape kind of caught my eye. So it's mainly that with this video, or they're probably going to go earlier than you think based on the latest stuff that we're hearing a, a, you know, a little bit of. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed talking about some of these guys. And I'm sure, there, again, there's probably more. Right when I'm done recording this, I'm probably like, ah, oh, maybe I should have put that guy in that video. So there's more. We're always talking about with you guys on Twitter. Uh, and then when we kind of recap all the draft picks throughout the draft, too. So, um yeah, make sure you join us for all that. Like, subscribe to Notifications on, and make sure you follow us on Twitter. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. We have a recent My Guys video, my favorite players in the draft. A recent Big Board video, a somewhat recent mock draft. We'll have a final one. Not too many changes from that, that last one, though, so you can check that out. Um, yeah, and then join us for that live stream. Cannot wait. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.